Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the end of the weekend. It is Sunday night, 9.34 p.m. California time. November 17th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here across the earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.3 into the area of Southern California. I was looking at the uh, seismograph stations here around China Lake. Looks like a, a pair of earthquakes coming into the area of Southern California there on that seismograph station. So... Let's see what we got going on here across the USGS map. I think starting to light up out here, it looks like, in the last hour, including that one earthquake uh, on the San Andreas Fault here, right on the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. Rather interesting. Got to watch that. 5.5 uh, miles below the surface for that quake. Also some movement stirring up here off the coast of Malibu once again with a two-pointer. Uh, that earthquake coming in here. Uh, in the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Getting a, a little series of earthquakes here in the last hour across the Southern California area. Uh, some further movement here across the Fontana area as well. In the last couple hours, a 1.4. And uh, that just kind of brings up a little uh, little area out there of about, uh, about 16 earthquakes or so here in the last 24 hours, including... A uh, 3.4 and a 3.5 that struck there yesterday. So things are start, starting to light up out here, folks. San Jacinto Fault Zone as well, showing some movement. Uh, the San Andreas Fault, you know, for now sleeps, but who knows when the, it's going to be woken up. Obviously, it's in a, uh, a very deep sleep. Been over 300 years since the last major rupture out here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And that's capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake. Imagine 8.1 down here. Uh, it's something like uh, Southern California has never seen before, at least in historical times here, in our time. Uh, obviously, it's had a number of large earthquakes out here throughout history. But uh, since we built up our civilization and infrastructure and whatnot, uh, uh, this event's going to be more damaging. Uh, further up north here, fairly quiet once you get up above the Ridgecrest area in the Garlock Fault shear zone here. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of activity through the rest of Central California. Um, the Bay Area, a handful of smaller quakes there outside of Berkeley. Uh, that is on the infamous Hayward Fault. Uh, that's another uh, fault system here that runs through a heavily populated area. Um, East Bay regions there that uh, this area is very capable of producing a large earthquake in itself. Nothing like an 8.1, but uh, some damaging quakes there are in the uh, future for that area. That's I think that's one of the more feared faults there across the Bay Area, the Hayward Fault, due to it running through numerous highly populated concrete jungles out there. All right, some movement there at the... Uh, Coastal range here of California, Northern California, a little 1.5. Aside from that, uh, let's see what we got here for trimmer activity tonight. Cascadia trimmer shows us that uh, we're sitting at zero epicenters once again. So no trimmer activity here. Uh, over the last week, we've had a, a little bit of movement here, mainly at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone with uh, looks like about 896 epicenters of trimmer counts. Here's the M Energy over here on the right side. Uh, but since uh, in the past two days, it's relatively non-existent. Uh, it's calmed down quite a bit. Uh, Pacific Northwest, got some movement on the Seattle Fault. A little bit on the west and a little bit on the east side of this uh, very dangerous fault system there that runs through another highly populated concrete jungle called Seattle. And uh, that area can see some large damaging earthquakes as well. This is uh, uh, no joke. This, this area can see some uh, upper sevens. Uh, so an upper seven underneath the Seattle area would be more dangerous and more damaging than the nine-pointer out here across the Cascadia. Now you guys know why, right? Proximity, right? Nine-pointer over here, uh, upper seven underneath Seattle, obviously Two different, two very different magnitudes, but uh, location, location, location. A couple of earthquakes there across the area today. Some ones and twos. Continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, the volcanoes out there, pretty quiet. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there, but uh, why don't we go check it out? Double check. 
and see what we have. Pretty quiet out there. There's actually not a whole lot going on. Some uh, wind events earlier. That's what this blue thick line is across many of the seismograph stations out there earlier. But since then, it's quiet. Awfully quiet. Uh, the rest of the area out here, minimal earthquake movement across the oil fields. One earthquake there in the New Madrid seismic zone from earlier this afternoon, a little 1.2. Aside from that, what do we got going on out here across the rest of the world? Southwest Indian Ridge showing some movement out here. South of Madagascar. That's uh, out there in the zipper zone. I call that the zipper zone because it's, uh, it's a fracture zone out there in the oceanic crust. Uh, creating some new seafloor throughout time and slowly but obviously surely uh we got uh you know some new land being built out there underneath the region that uh showing up there on the earthquake 3d globe aside from that a relatively quiet across the mediterranean getting a, a handful of quakes here across the mid-atlantic ridge um see this activity right here got three of them three five pointers here within an hour of each other uh, out across the, uh, I don't know if this is going to be the Bode Verde fracture zone or maybe a separate one down here. Uh, but things are starting to stir up out here. It's been relatively quiet across the Atlantic Ocean, the rift boundary, um, for a while. But things, you know, obviously it looks like they're starting to change out here across that area, which, uh, you know, will repeat the cycle of elevated seismic activity out here across the globe. Really get things stirring up out here. And I think, uh, I think a lot of us here are expecting an eight-pointer out here somewhere. The question is where. And I say that. I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but I think we're overdue for an eight-pointer. On average, if you look back throughout the years for an 8.0 or above magnitude earthquake, uh, they, they come every year or every other year. And we have not had an 8.0 earthquake since 2021. So... We're living on borrowed time out here, but the question is, uh, you know, where's it gonna, where's it gonna hit? Uh, I can mark two spots out here across the uh, subduction zone here of Japan. That's one of them, or potentially the Kuro Kamchatka Trench up here. That's another lengthy subduction zone that's uh, well overdue. That's my best guess uh, up there, those two regions. But anywhere, um, California could see an eight pointer, the Cascadia. Gulf of Mexico, any Middle America Trench, uh, uh, subduction zone here, the Prue-Chile Trench, New Zealand, anywhere can. But uh, I think these areas are fairly well primed. So we'll see what happens. You can't hold off that eight-pointer for uh, much longer. Let's see what else we got here across the globe. South America area, fairly quiet. Some twos and threes out there. Uh, really nothing major going on. That's all typical movement on any given day. Uh, Alaska got a 3.8 there across the Aleutian Trench. A little bit of movement here across the northern edge of the Kuro Kamchatka area. But uh, definitely notable uptick here across the area of the Filipino Plate. That's going to be that diamond-shaped area. I'll show you guys here on the map this region right here. Uh, getting all sorts of activity on each side of that plate boundary, of course. If you look at the arrows, they're all pointing into that region. Pacific Plate, the Eurasia Plate, Australia Plate, North American Plate up here in the north. That's uh, the crunch zone. So we're always building up strain up there uh, for some big-time earthquakes. It, it doesn't take hundreds of years for enough you know, slip rate to produce a large earthquake. That's why we see so much more activity out here across this area. This is where all the plates tend to uh, subduct, collide. California just sits on a transform boundary here, a strike slip zone for the most part, and obviously various other faults, but the main area out here are sliding past each other. North America and the Pacific Plate. Up north here, you got the Cascadia subduction zone, but it's separate. Uh, it's different than, say, for example, the big Pacific Plate here, um, putting the strain here against the Eurasia Plate along the Kuro Kamchatka. Uh, this area is a subduction zone, but, uh, there's a couple different areas here that, uh, are further subducting the Juan de Fuca plate. You got the ridges out here, a uh, seafloor, seafloor rift boundary. That's why these ridges are, uh, striking out here. That adds further strain here across the southern end. 
That Gorda plate is pretty much all but uh, uh, disappearing underneath this area. And the Juan de Fuca plate here, uh, a couple different rift boundaries, as you can see. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit smaller. It does not have the force as all these other subduction zones have on it. So that's why we see more activity out here um, throughout time than the Cascadia. But it's the Cascadia could be coming at any point as well. It's been 324 years since the last big one out here. And average intervals run about 280 to 400, 450 or so. It depends on who you ask. But, uh, yeah, there's a, quite a bit of strain been building up out here. Guess we'll just have to see what happens, right? Getting some interesting times out here. A couple of smaller earthquakes here in the last few minutes. Mainly up there across the Ridgecrest area. Been noticing here a lot of trending activity south and then seems to work its way up north here. Uh, California could see a large earthquake at any time as well. It's just, it's one of those things that, you know, if there's enough strain out here, uh, and things are right, um, it could pop at any second out here. So uh, we can't delay it. That's not possible. We, there's no way to put this off. It's definitely a, a big earthquake coming out here. Just don't, don't know when. All right, uh, a little earthquake up here across the Aleutian Trench, 3.8. Uh, let's check out space weather, see if we got anything major going on. A little bit of C flare activity, it looks like here. Maybe even a low-grade M flare. In the last hour, noticing a little bit of a stair-stepping event there, indicating some some uh, amplification there, flaring. Let's see where that's coming from. Well, uh, I don't think it's this area over here. It looks like maybe something over here across the eastern limb. There's a couple of bright features there from this far side uh, sunspot group that's coming around the bend. Uh, just barely getting a little glancing uh, view of it. Maybe there's a little bit of complexity in there as well. Um, when I showed you guys the far side sunspot watch, it, it doesn't show you the complexity of the sunspot. So it's hard to tell exactly, um, you know, how complex they are on the far side watch. But uh, now that we got a little visual of it, it looks like things are starting to kick up here in terms of further complexity so uh, we'll watch that area obviously it's kicking up in the c flare and low m flare category and the color is right here indicating some complexity from that sunspot group that's coming around the bend here's the far side watch right here is put out uh, today it's a sunspot group right here if we look uh in the previous week or so it had a lot of darker colors here indicating uh, some broad coverage area and maybe even further complexity than what we're seeing right now. Uh, one of the newer images up here, you know, it's hard to tell. We don't know exactly how complex it is until it comes around into the Earth-directed view. But looking at it uh, now, it looks like things may, uh, may pick up. We'll have to continue to watch that. No major roars in the forecast there for now, folks. Storm Prediction Center... We have uh, we got some severe weather kicking off out, out here tomorrow, folks. Uh, potentially early Monday morning as well. So kind of a big deal. There is an enhanced area with a huge area, 5% chance for its tornado activity. 2% here in the green. Looks like some big time wind damage and uh, no health threats. I'm surprised. That's surprising. So tornado and wind threats out here for the uh, Monday throughout the day Monday as well and I think into Monday night and into Tuesday shifts a little bit further east there as we go uh, throughout the day tomorrow but I uh, gotta watch that I want to show you guys uh, the seven day precipitation totals here from the weather prediction center folks there at NOAA look at California we're talking about 10 to 15 inches of rainfall across the northern coastline there of California. Down here where I live outside of Chico, may see up here in the red, there's a little bit orange extending down here as well. So we could see maybe even four to five inches of rainfall here over the next week uh, from a series of atmospheric rivers that is coming into the area. Check this out. There's our storm getting going out there right now. 
Let me check out the weather radar out there. It looks like this is going to be a an ongoing thing right now. Let's see. Yeah, we already got a bunch of storms firing up out there. So 10, 11, 12. This is about almost midnight out here. These guys are going to be woken up pretty drastically here from a line of thunderstorms and potential severe weather out there, folks. Goodness. Just outside the uh, La Mesa area, Odessa, moving into the Snyder, Texas area. Um, some big time storms rocking the area tonight, tomorrow morning, and throughout the day on Monday. So, uh, the forecast model out here uh, for California, let me put this into motion here. About Wednesday, late Tuesday into Wednesday, we got this line of moisture out here that's streaming from pretty much the tropics. It extends all the way down there. Uh, it doesn't show it on this map, but pretty heavy rainfall rates coming in uh, to the California area uh, for the day on Wednesday into Thursday as well, potentially in the Friday before it starts to scoot out of here. But it looks like there's another repeat event uh, for Monday um, coming up there on the 25th or so. Southern California is going to get some heavy-duty rainfall as well uh, as we head towards the uh, middle of n not this coming week, but next week. And uh, it's it's a very active pattern out there. Total accumulated precipitation run here will go even further beyond the seven-day chart. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of rainfall. This is a GFS model here. What I'd like to show is the... Uh, This model right here will go out to about Tuesday the 26th. ECM WF model. Goodness, check this out here. Over a foot of rain across some of the cask uh, the uh, coast ranges there of Northern California. Outside of Chico here, got about five inches or so. Um, just below that, Redding may, may see a little bit more. They're in the mountains. They're kind of close to the mountain range. Sacramento. Uh, going to get in on a few inches of rain as well. Uh, so this kind of, you know, this is definitely going to be a big time weather maker out here uh, with this atmospheric river that's stretching all the way down out here towards the Hawaii area. Pretty crazy. But, uh, hey, we need it. I, I asked for it. And, man, it didn't take long to uh, deliver. Speaking of Hawaii, a couple of earthquakes out there in the last few hours or so nothing major going on no major unusual volcanic activity just kind of watching that so we'll keep an eye here on southern california with things lighten up out here I'm, I'm sure these guys really don't want to see any more rainfall here across the rancho palos verdes area i was down here a couple months ago investigating the landslides out there across the area recently a lot of homes uh Kind of slip sliding down the mountain ranges out or the hills there across this region. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful scenery down there. I can understand why someone would want to build across these hills, but uh, yeah, any further rainfall out there could escalate the situation. Uh, so we'll have to watch that. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's check out the seismograph stations. There's a little earthquake, couple little earthquakes there on the China Lake station. So, you know, just be on guard. These uh, elevated seismic events here tend to come in wave patterns out here. Have a good night. Enjoy what's left of the weekend here. We'll catch you guys back out here for the Monday morning update. Goodness. Already Monday. Crazy. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys later. Stay safe.